Hello, Melrose. As you know, today is 9-11, and the city is commemorating that tragic day with a brief ceremony and remarks. We're going to open up hearing from our Veteran Services Officer, Karen Burke. At 5.45 a.m. on Tuesday, September 11, 2001, many Americans were still asleep. At this time, two of the 19 hijackers responsible for the 9-11 attacks would clear security at the Portland International Jetport and set in motion a plan that resulted in the death of 2,996 people. These people were citizens of 78 countries, ranging in age from 2 to 75. Today, 19 years later, I remember. I had just returned from a deployment to the Middle East three days before. Because of this, I was home instead of at work. I remember having the TV on in the background and hearing over the news that a plane had just struck one of the World Trade Center towers and thinking to myself, how do you do that? How do you miss the towers? Assuming this must be some type of small plane that accidentally bumped into or scraped one of the towers. I went into the living room, still trying to figure out how this could happen. I assumed they would talk about casualties on the plane or have footage of a small fire. Then I saw the screen. The next 17 minutes were a blur as I watched the news, trying to figure out what was going on. How could a large airliner crash into the tower? Until 9.03, when I, along with countless others, watched a second plane crash into the South Tower. At that time, we knew the crashes had been deliberate. 14 minutes later, when American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon, I watched in disbelief, wondering, when was it going to stop? We were under attack and didn't know when it was going to stop. How many more lives would be taken? The attacks would end one hour and 17 minutes after they started, when a fourth plane crashed in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. We would learn the passengers and crew on United Airlines Flight 93, having heard about the attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon, gave their own lives for the sake of saving countless others when they charged the cockpit to overtake the hijackers, ultimately resulting in the crash of Flight 93 into a field, killing all 44 souls on board. During this time, I was getting phone calls from my squadron and was told to stay home and not to come to my base. It was so hard not being with my military team. I wanted so desperately to be able to help, to be at my squadron getting ready to fly to New York City or Washington, D.C. to help. Instead, I was told to stay at home and enter crew rest, to be ready for what we didn't know. I remember my roommates and I watching President Bush address the nation that night and knew we would be preparing to deploy. We knew life as we knew it was about to change. Today, we take time to honor and remember the fallen and those they left behind. From the 2,996 people killed on September 11th to the over 400 first responders who have died as a result of illnesses from their work at Ground Zero, we vowed to never forget. Let us remember the lives of those we lost that were taken so abruptly. Let us remember the brave first responders running through the flames, smoke, and debris to help. Let us remember the passengers on a flight headed to San Francisco, selflessly attacking their hijackers to prevent their plane from being used as a weapon. Let us remember citizens both at home and internationally opening their homes to take in those who were stranded. On a day that brought such tragedy, the best of us came out. We were strong and we held each other up. We came together to get through the worst. This morning, I ask you to join us in remembering those we lost on 9-11 and the thousands we have lost as a direct consequence of that day in remembering all those they left behind and remembering how we came together to take care of one another. I believe 9-11 touched everyone in some way. Today, let's look out for each other, support each other, and remember. Let's look after each other as we make it through a day that brought so much hurt and loss 19 years ago. Let us never forget so they may live on. Scripture says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Each year on September 11th, we think of those who died. We mourn for those who died that day and in the days, weeks, months, and even years after the terrorist attacks. Who died on that day? Almost 3,000 people of all ages, religions, nationalities, and backgrounds, the young and the old, the rich and the poor. We continue to grieve as a nation, and we grieve for the inconceivable pain and loss felt by so many for so long. We seek comfort for their families and friends and for our nation and our world. And we all seek an answer to the perhaps unanswerable question, how can there be such evil in the world? I do not have that answer. We rightfully remember the day as one of almost unfathomable tra tragedy. 
But I think it will do us good to remember and reflect on what else we saw on September 11, 2001, and the days that followed. What we saw and what we remember were so many acts of grace, compassion, and humanity. We witnessed firefighters, police officers, first responders, and civilians run into danger to help, many at the cost of their own lives. We saw hundreds waiting in line to give blood. We marveled at strangers helping strangers in a time of desperate need, and we were moved to tears. And we saw many nations stand with America. The French newspaper Le Monde printed the next day the emotion-stirring headline, Nous sommes tous Américains, translated as, We are all Americans. And the Prime Minister of Canada, Jean Chrétien, addressing Massachusetts' own Ambassador Paul Cellucci and the Canadian Parliament on their day of mourning, stated, Even as we grieve our own losses, the message we send to the American people is equally clear. Do not despair. You are not alone. We are with you. The whole world is with you. And across the world and all over America, people gathered in prayer services, often people of many religions standing side by side in recognition that all the great faiths of this earth reject the violence and bloodshed that took place on that day and point us towards hope for healing, for peace, and for better days ahead. What we had in those days after 9-11 was an all-too-brief commitment to national unity, a recognition that our common humanity and that which, bind, that which binds us together always, always will be stronger than those things that threaten to tear us apart. And so a question presents itself. How do we best honor those who died as a result of these attacks? We have built monuments and memorials, we gather every year for ceremonies like this one, and we read the names of victims, like Melrose Raymond Rocha, who died at 29 years of age in the World Trade Center attacks, and John Lopez, a 41-year-old living in Melrose, who was traveling to California on United Flight 175 just to visit his family. We imagine what might have been if those victims among us were still among us, as fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, preachers, doctors, lawyers, teachers, role models, heroes, mentors, police officers, firefighters, or whatever the future might have had in store for them. We imagine, we mourn, and we remember. But I think the best way each one of us can honor them is to recall that time of unity and compassion that time of sacrifice and the many acts of grace that we saw on that terrible day. Recall that spirit of unity and common purpose today and commit to rediscovering it. Recreate it in their names and sustain it in their memories and we shall not forget. God bless those we have lost and may their memories always be a blessing. Thank you very much.